boots, new job, new and really thick skin. Because brace yourselves, American virologist Angie Rasmussen has new fan mail. You are so addicted to people respecting you. I have to wonder, how empty is the rest of your life? Self-righteous, pompous, arrogant, dumb you are. Nice, eh? Saskatoon is now home after a move from New York. Not easy. Heading up a lab in Canada's Center for Pandemic Research in a pandemic? Really not easy. And choosing to talk, frankly, to hundreds of thousands of Twitter followers about COVID and vaccines? Well, that's what draws all the online hate. Shut the up, Angie. We are so sick of your negative narrative. Go to hell, you inbred. Uh, I'm really sorry that you're getting all that. That's, it's not okay. I can give as good as I get. I try not to insult people personally. I always try to engage with ideas. I'm not going to allow them to take over my platform and amplify the nasty things they're saying. I'm gonna focus on amplifying the message that I think people need to hear. That message, hang in, limit your contacts, get vaccinated, crucially get the rest of the world vaccinated. And to all levels of government here at home, she says step up even more. It's not so much the virus that surprised me, it's our inability to cope with it that has surprised me. It's certainly not about imposing lockdowns, it's about making it so that everybody has equal access to the tools they need to protect themselves. And I guess I'd say finally, making high quality masks available to every Canadian as well, um, especially making sure that rapid tests and those high quality masks are available in schools. Her confidence comes from a career studying viruses. This lab she now calls home is hiring for the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization, or VEDO, will soon be one of only a handful in the world secure enough to study deadly new pathogens and how they jump from animals to humans. Speaking of which, let's talk Omicron. Do you have an understanding of Omicron's behavior now? When you look at the sequence of Omicron, it looks like the most recent ancestors of Omicron were actually SARS coronavirus 2 variants that were circulating in mid 2020. How did Omicron evolve without us noticing that Omicron was evolving? That it potentially was evolving in a population of people that isn't monitored closely. But given how transmissible Omicron is and how rapidly it's become the dominant variant in most of the world, it's really unlikely, I think, that, that it would fly below the radar for a year and a half and nobody would have picked it up. So what explains that gap? Where's this variant that's now such a staggering global menace been? Rasmussen's curiosity aligns with her research that just maybe the variant has been hiding elsewhere, maybe coursing through animals instead of humans. And if so, that's a problem. We could be looking potentially at future variants coming out of, out of what's called spillback or infection of animals from the human population. The virus starts spreading in those animals and then potentially can pop back into people. And that is one hypothesis for where Omicron came from. But I don't know how worried I should be about what you're saying. So that's really why we're doing this work. Um, we're doing it to try to understand how worried we all should be. Now we know um, that, that COVID or SARS coronavirus 2 has already caused infections in white-tailed deer, um, both in Canada and in the United States. So we thought, you know, what about the other animals that are in Canada? SARS coronavirus 2, we're looking at receptors from a bunch of different animal species that we think might be able to, to actually permit infection of SARS coronavirus 2. And we're testing that in the lab to see if these animals can actually be susceptible to infection. So stay tuned. Stay tuned because after COVID-19, more pandemics are possible, maybe even likely. And Saskatchewan is an important place for research about what may come next. The province's economy intricately linked with agriculture. So if researchers identify which animals to worry about, they'll then work fast to find ways to protect both the animals and the economy for everyone's sake. Like what, what is the reason to, to be concerned about commercial farming in, in particular? Many really large farming operations keep animals, sometimes of different species, but in very, very close proximity. And those conditions are really, really conducive to a virus spreading like wildfire if a virus gets into that population. 
Now this is already an economic problem for farmers when those are, are livestock diseases that can wipe out their entire herd or their entire flock. Um, but if it's a pathogen like say influenza that can go back and forth between some of these species and between humans, then it becomes what we call really a one health problem. This is work based in Canada, but with learnings for the whole world. And if it looks like Rasmussen hasn't really settled into her offices yet, it's just because there's no time. She needs to keep her eye on other viruses that may be lurking. If we have a pandemic that has a much higher case fatality rate than SARS coronavirus 2, which is comparatively very low uh, next to those other viruses, we are going to be in a world of trouble. And this pandemic is going to seem like a cakewalk in comparison. A scientist working with urgency on two fronts, in the lab and in the murk of the online world. Correcting misinformation, explaining the science over and over again, taking the insults and threats and still pushing for more vaccines, more protections and ultimately a bit of hope. The least I can do is, is help empower people with some information about that and let them make their own good decisions about public health for them and their families with the, the best information that they possibly can. There is no such thing as a forever pandemic. It will at least become easier for us to be living with. We should uh, start to enjoy the benefits of population immunity because enough of us have done the right thing and gotten vaccinated. And you've given Canadians an extraordinary education throughout all this. I just have to say to the national Canadian audience that I'm so grateful for how warmly I've been welcomed here and I'm so glad to be putting down roots here. And, uh, and you know, thank you for welcoming me to your country. I'll try to, to live up to the expectations that have been set for me and that I've set for myself.